So, uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, we thank our Lord uh, and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, uh, and our Heavenly Father for giving us the opportunity to still uh, discuss uh, about uh, his wonderful words of life. Uh, so, as you all know, uh, today we're going to study about a story that is written in the Old Testament. We all know that uh, we have studied uh, previously all the things uh, which are uh, written in the Old Testament uh, are actually, you see, uh, types uh, of uh, things are mentioned in the, you see, uh, New Testament. So, all the fulfillment of the things in the Old Testament uh, is clearly uh, mentioned to us uh, and is clearly known to us uh, by the things, uh, you see, uh, that is given in the New Testament. Uh, so, therefore, we have studied about uh, type and anti-type, uh, so many things in the Bible. <clears throat> you see, uh, can anybody tell me any of the example which you have studied in the Old Testament, uh, the type and anti-type? Any subject you remember, brother? Hmm? The test of Abraham. Very good. So, that one we have studied. And also, uh, you see, uh, we studied about the uh, marriage of uh, Isaac. Uh, and uh, last week also we studied about a uh, few weeks uh, before the uh, tabernacle. So, Jordan. So, all these things uh, are uh, actually a type and anti-type. So, even uh, when we have studied, uh, you see, about uh, the tabernacle, that one also we have studied, uh, you see, the things uh, that are mentioned uh, in the Old Testament, uh, all uh, actually signify and typify something in Christ. So, let us read that one, brother. Colossians 2, 16 and 17, brother. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. See, which are the shadow of things to come. So, but the body is of Christ. That means this is just a shadow of things to come. This are all showing what uh, was supposed to happen after Christ came. So, we also read in Romans 15, 4, that the words of things were written aforetime, before were written for our learning. So, it is written for our edifying, for our comfort, for our patience, for our increase in faith. So, all these things has got uh, some uh, significance. So, today, we'll take one story that is written in the Old Testament that is given to us in 2 Kings 5th uh, chapter. So, in 2 Kings 5th chapter, if you see, there a story is mentioned about a warrior about a army general of uh, Syria. You see, uh, it's mentioned about uh, Naaman. So, we all know, and uh, since childhood, we have heard this uh, story about Naaman. But today, we're going to see some uh, spiritual lessons from the uh, life of Naaman. We all know that uh, Naaman was the captain of the host of king of Syria. He was a very uh, powerful man and a great uh, man. So, because of him, the Syrian army had won lot of battles because of him, and he was a, a mighty man. But uh, there was one problem with, uh, you see, Naaman. You know what was the problem? That uh, Naaman was a leper. Let us read 2 Kings 5 1, brother. 2 Kings 5 1. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Mm, but he was a leper. He was a mighty man, but uh, though he was a mighty man, there was one problem with him that uh, he was a leper. You see, so we all know that uh, during those days, uh, you see, leprosy was an incurable disease. So, because of this uh, disease with Naaman, his entire family were, uh, you see, completely immersed in sadness. They were all totally sad because leprosy in those days was an incurable disease. We all know that what happens uh, once if a man is affected by, you see, leprosy. So, we know that uh, the body completely gets infected with this uh, uh, leprosy disease and it begins to eat uh, the bones, uh, the muscles, and everything. The man is totally disfigured. Uh, he loses his original uh, uh, glory, uh, you see, and the uh, beauty, everything. Uh, so, another more thing is that uh, whatever uh, you see, you do, even if you come and prick with a 
you see needle their body don't feel that pain even if a hot water drops uh, over the wound uh, on the lepers also they won't feel that pain but uh, that as uh, you see that muscles and bones will be started uh, to eat by that uh, leprosy and leprosy was a contagious disease so there was no you see cure for this leprosy during uh, uh, those days and uh, in such a condition you see once uh, what happened was that uh, naman had attacked uh, israel you see he had uh, attacked israel and uh, he had uh, come for a war over israel and it was during that time that he had taken a child from you see the nation of israel as a captivity to his home and that child seeing the sufferings of uh, naman and his wife she could not uh, you see keep quiet uh, and uh, you see she began to witness about the one true god and the miracles uh, he did to naman's wife read verse 2 brother huh? and the syrians had gone out by com companies and had brought away captive out of the land of israel a little maid and she waited on naman's wife mm. then verse three continue mm. and and she said unto her mistress would god my lord were with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy she she what did she witness she witnessed about the one true god and said there is a prophet of god in samaria in israel and if our lord naman would go to israel and meet this prophet the prophet will definitely heal his disease just imagine the condition of this small child she is in the enemy's land enemy has captured her and taken to her home and the entire family destroyed instead of uh, you see thinking the other way that god has punished uh, naman because of uh, taking uh, her as a captivity and spoiling her uh, house and uh, killing her parents but uh, she did not uh, think uh, that way she was so soft and loving that uh, you see she could not uh, see the sufferings of naman and his wife uh, and uh, she immediately you see witnessed about the one true god imagine if we were in pakistan uh, or any other uh, enemy country would we try to help our enemies no but yet uh, this child told about uh, a prophet in israel immediately you see naman and his uh, family received hope then uh, they went uh, to meet the king of uh, syria and told uh, uh, about all these things about this prophet and the king sent a letter to israel saying i will give you so much of gold and silver and all and so much of clothes and all i will send my you see uh, captain of the host naman is uh, infected with leper kindly heal him you see as soon as uh, you see the naman and all the uh, chariots come to israel they immediately go to the you see palace and uh, they give this letter to king of uh, israel you see and uh, you know what was the reaction of the king the king was uh, so you see uh, sad and discouraged you see he could not control his emotions uh, uh, you see now let us read what is written in the letter uh, verse 6 brother verse 6 and he brought the letter to the king of israel saying now when this letter is come unto thee behold i have therewith sent naman my servant to thee that thou mayst recover him of his leprosy mm, the do may recover him of his leprosy as soon as the king read this one he could not believe this one why because leprosy during those days was a incurable disease nobody could be cured of leprosy it was something like uh, what we have a uh, contagious diseases today and as soon as uh, king read this one he began to tore his cloth and uh, he said uh, am i god uh, am i you see god that i can uh, heal him this is impossible and the king uh, of syria is trying to search for excuses 
So you may attack Israel. So you may fight against me. See, read verse 7, brother. Huh? And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he, he rent his clothes and said, Am I God? Uh, to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy wherefore consider i pray you and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me ah how seeketh a quarrel against me and as soon as uh, you see this news began to spread all over israel this news also fell into the ears of uh, elisha you know we all know that after elijah was taken elisha you see, took uh, his place. And uh, when Yahisha heard this one, he immediately sent a news to king of Israel saying, why the king should, uh, you see, weep and lament. You see, instead of that one, eh, let him uh, send uh, Naman to me. I will cure of his uh, disease, he said. And immediately, as uh, in verse 8, uh, that's one that he said, uh, immediately the same which is, was passed on to Naman. And Naman immediately took his chariots uh, and began to journey towards house of uh, Elisha. Read verse 9, brother. Huh? So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Mm, stood at the door of Elisha. And uh, as he began to uh, come near uh, the door of Elisha, Naaman expected that this prophet would be some great prophet. Uh, he would be very exalted uh, by the king and will be living in palaces. And uh, as soon as uh, he used the chariot of Naman, a red carpet would be put for uh, Naman and his soldiers and he would be welcomed. And uh, inside the house, uh, a lot of things will be done and a uh, lot of rituals will be done and so many sacrifices will be given. You have all these things. Uh, but unfortunately, none of these things happened. None of these expectations uh, happened there. But instead, when the door was knocked, the servant of Elisha opened the door and simply said to Naaman, Go and dip in Jordan seven times and thou shall be clean. Read verse 10, brother. Huh? And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and worship in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. See, thou shalt be clean. But Naaman could not digest this one. As soon as he heard this one, he was very angry. He immediately went out from uh, the presence of uh, Elisha. Because, uh, you see, uh, he thought that uh, everybody would welcome him. He's bought so much of silver, gold, and beautiful raiments and all. Instead of uh, doing uh, all these things and welcoming him, nobody welcomed him, nobody honored him. You see, nobody even respected him. Told, go and dip in... Uh, Jordan seven times. So, so immediately Naaman took his chairs and went back uh, to prepare his journey, went back to Syria. When he was going on the way to Syria, many thoughts began to come to his mind. Why King tore his clothes? Why Elisha was not found in the courts of uh, King? Why he was sent separately? And why the Elisha's house is so small? Why did he not come and welcome me? But uh, a small servant came and told me just to go and dip in Jordan. Why? Why? So many questions and all. Similarly, eh, you see, the soldiers who were along with him were also in the same mind. But uh, slowly, his servants came and told, Lord, Master, if, uh, just think, if uh, that prophet would have told some great thing, uh, would we have not done? You would have definitely done it. Uh, if you would have told to sacrifice 100 uh, you see, lambs, what would you have done? You would have grandly given those sacrifices. But he has, so, he has told you a very, very simple thing. A small and a very simple thing. Just go and dip in Jordan. So why don't we try it? Okay? So it, they told, Lord, Pastor, why don't we try it? Why don't we just put it to test and see? If it happens, well and fine. But if nothing happens... Let us return back to our uh, Syria. Read verse 13 and 14, brother. Huh? Second Kings 5, 13, 14. Mm. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid 
thee do something great thing, or wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than uh, when he said to thee, wash and be clean? Mm. Then mm. Uh, went yeah. he down and mm. dived to himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, mm. and he was clean. Yeah, he was clean. So, so what did Naman do? Naman uh, tried to put it into test and see whether the man of God has told truth or not. And he, as he was going on the way, the river Jordan was very near. You see, he was passing by the river Jordan. And immediately, his soldiers encouraged him, why don't we try it? And he also thought, okay, well, let us try it. And he came to Jordan and dipped seven times. And as he dipped seven times, his leprosy was cured. And his flesh became like a little child. He was completely clean. He came up as a new man. So just imagine, you see, Naman would have gone and dipped in Jordan. How many times did he pass? Seven times. Imagine, first time, first time he dipped, was there any changes? No. Nothing happened. Not even little bit changes also. You see, second time he dipped, again no changes. Third time he dipped, Again, no changes. At least uh, some changes would be there, no? Huh? At least three times midway. Uh, something should happen. If something is not happening, then the questions will start arise. Uh, imagine if a doctor tells us to take a medicine for five days, uh, what will he do? We'll take it only for two days. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, the cure should happen within two days. Uh, if nothing happens, immediately we'll run away to the doctor and say, oh, doctor, your medicines are wrong. Uh, but uh, here, that was the same case. Nothing happened. Uh, but Naman was a... Mighty man of valor. He was a see, leader, a captain. So once if he decided to dip, he would dip. Fourth time he dipped, nothing has still happened. Fifth time, nothing. Sixth time also, nothing, not even little bit changes. Imagine if we were in the stage, what would you have done? I have six times, nothing has happened means. Seventh time also, nothing will happen. Come on, let us go. Immediately we'll walk out. But Naman, no, he dipped the seventh time. As soon as he came up, his flesh was fresher than a child. Imagine the glow and the softness of a child, a newborn child. Such was his, you see, flesh. So he became so happy that he came running to see Elisha. And he honored him with all the gifts and all the, you see, precious things which he had, you see. Uh, sent by King Syria. But uh, what did uh, uh, Elisha do? Elisha received nothing of it. Uh. Imagine. Uh? So, immediately received the blessings and went back to where? Uh, Syria. Imagine what uh, Naman would have done as soon as he went to Syria. What would have done? What you would have done for the child? A child who witnessed about one true God to Naman. Eh? What Naman would have done? Naman would have immediately released the child. And he would have told the soldiers to go and, you see, drop her to Israel safely and seek for a family. And he would have put in all his efforts to make them reunited. Imagine the Abhudran. Eh? So happiness this has brought up. Okay, but what lessons do we have it from uh, the seven dippings of Naman? You see, how many times did Naman dip? How many times? Seven times. Seven times. Some people think that, oh, we should take baptism seven times. No, no, no. Baptism should be taken how many times? How many times baptism should be taken? One. One, which is the correct one? That one, one should be taken. Okay? So, a correct and proper baptism, as per the scriptures, that has to be taken once. Okay? Without even understanding the correct uh, real baptism, if we take uh, immersion in the water, in the river, tank, anything, that is not at all baptism. But anyway, you see, Naman dipped seven times, it seems. So, so many people, you know, they go literally to Jordan, they dip seven times, but take baptism seven times. Eh? Eh? Properly taking it one time is sufficient. 
but one proper time should be the correct time and the correct one not that whatever we have taken once is the correct one whatever we have taken once might be the very wrong one which is not a scriptural but here you see naman was infected with uh, uh, what uh, leprosy now what does leprosy mean in the bible leprosy in the bible means sin you see as leprosy is contaminating disease it is very contagious it spreads from one to another similarly the sin is very contagious it spreads one to other there is no cure for leprosy during those days so similarly until jesus came and died on the cross for us there was no cure for sin at all that uh, leprosy is to deform the body completely eat off the body similarly the sin in this mankind is completely eating each and every people of the earth completely destroying them and those who had leprosy even if you take a pin and prick them if you pour a hot water also there wouldn't be any feeling for them similarly who are deeply immersed in sin whatever you do you can't change them they won't have any feelings even if you prick them even if you hit them even if you pour upon them there is no use at all you see they all lose that beauty similarly because of sin mankind has lost that original beauty in which he was created you see dear brethren the mankind was created originally you see in the likeness of god so beautiful he was huh? the beauty of character also was there in adam you see he was created in god's image all the important characters of god were all reflecting in whom you see in adam so adam was a perfect man he was a perfect king you see of this earth he was our first four father dear brethren what did god tell them not to eat of the forbidden fruit in the day you eat there what will happen you shall surely die so but uh, we all know the story very well that uh, you see the serpent uh, beguiled eve to eat the uh, forbidden uh, you see fruit and what did uh, eve do eh? she ate the fruit uh, which god had told not to eat uh, dear brethren and uh, once uh, you see she ate uh, immediately what happened uh, she gave it to adam and adam was ate and through them sin entered into this world uh, you see and uh, once uh, the sin entered into the world everybody have fallen into that sinful condition of leprosy so to be cured of this one how many times uh, you see this step has to be taken you see seven steps ah uh, uh, seven uh, steps has to be taken so what is the meaning of seven in the bible ah uh, seven in the bible means uh, you see seven is a actually complete number correct ah uh? uh? oh brother seven in the bible means what uh? complete number perfect number so the word seven actually comes more than 400 times in the bible you see how many times it come 400 times in the bible seven creative days seven years seven churches seven trumpets seven angels seven plagues you see in the rainbow how many colors are there you see seven uh, colors in the rainbow so dear brother if you see all these things uh, and many more things uh, are mentioned in the bible about uh, seven uh, you see more than more than four and at times uh, you see it comes uh, in the bible so <clears throat> so what are these seven steps uh? so let us uh, you see go through uh, one by one very uh, uh, quickly and see what are the seven steps which we need to take to cleanse ourselves of sin the first dipping represents uh, faith you see so if we need to be cleansed of our uh, you see uh, sin the first and the basic uh, important step uh, every christian should take uh, is a step of faith uh, you see the bible says that without faith it is impossible to please god uh, that uh homer two minutes 
Gopal brother uh, has got discounted. He'll join him. It's two minutes. Okay, the first uh, step uh, a man should take uh, is a step of uh, faith. So faith in what? Uh, see, we all know that we are sinners. Uh, you see, if we have to be cleansed by the blood of uh, Christ, uh, then we should not need to have faith. Faith on God. Uh, therefore, in the Bible it says, uh, you see, without uh, uh, faith, it is impossible to please God. Uh, therefore, Faith is the very foundation of a Christian character. The first thing, you see, if we need to come to God, we need to have faith. What does the Bible say? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because God has created all these things, many more things. And how do we believe that all these things were created by, you see, by God? It is, you see, by I, by our faith. And uh, it is by faith that all our, uh, you see, uh, sins will be cleansed. Uh, read, brother. First John 1 John 1.9, brother. First John 1 John 1.9. We confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, you see, if uh, we have faith uh, and if we confess our sins, uh, he is faithful uh, you see, to cleanse us from all our sins. So, for forgiveness of sins, the first thing is that we need to have faith. Generally, we can go to the second step. See, without the first step, second step cannot be reached at all. Now, what is the second step? The second step is having faith in action. That means the faith which you have, you should be have a basis for the faith. And the basis for our faith is God's word, the Bible. You see, as we begin to believe in Jesus, the next step, what should I have? We should have so much of zeal and interest to study more about our you see, Master, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we need to search the scriptures daily and uh, check uh, uh, about more about God and His plan, and the beautiful purposes of eternal. If somebody has so much of love, then definitely they will do these things. Uh, or things are uh, uh, study the word of God. Uh, why study? Why give importance to the Bible? You see, you attend all the meetings. Uh, you see, you will attend... Uh, uh, you see, prayer meetings, uh, you'll read the Bible, you'll take all the notes of the, you see, subjects uh, and read it. Uh, and you start witnessing to other people also. Why? Because the second step uh, is, uh, you see, importance of the word of God. Uh, uh, read, there was a people in Berea. They had same faith, it seems. Acts 17, 11, brother. Acts of the Apostles 17, 11. These were more Noble than those in Thessalonica, in that oh. they received the word with all red, red, oh. readings of mind and scratched the scripture daily, whether those things were so. Mm. So they checked the scriptures, uh, you see, daily, uh, seeing that if they were. Uh, uh, as per the Bible. So, they were so zealous and so knowledgeable that they checked if uh, what Apostle Paul preached what as per the Bible or not. So similarly, we should have curiosity, interest to learn more about the word of God. And what does God desire? You see? Does he desire that everybody uh, call him uh, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Amen. Eh? See? What does the Bible say? Osea 6.6, 6, brother. Osea 6 6. You can see the screen and also read. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. 
I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than one offering. So, the knowledge of God is very important to know God's plan, purposes properly, and to live a life as per it. You see, understanding the Bible is very, very important. So, how did Jesus fulfill God's will? In Isaiah 53 11, it says, now, you see, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. So Jesus was also given this knowledge. In the Bible, Jesus is called the wisdom of God. You see, therefore, the word of God is very important. Whenever Jesus spoke, he spoke and told that uh, this is written as per the scriptures. Uh, the scriptures uh, say so and so. You see, uh, let us read uh, 2 Peter 1 5, brother. 2 Peter 1 5, brother. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue uh, and to virtuous knowledge. Mm. See, what does the Bible say? We should give very, very importance to what? Uh, huh? To faith. And after faith, what we should do? We should add virtue. That means goodness. And after goodness, what we should do? You see, we should add knowledge, it seems. So, knowledge and the word of God is very important. This is the second step. So, after the second step is taken, then only the third step can be taken. So, what is the third step? Third step is quitting sin, leaving sin. So, as we accept Jesus as a personal savior, we try to, you see, understand more about him, and as we try to understand more about him, you see, we will try to come near, near to him. And we'll draw away from sin because we know and we'll come to know that, uh, you see, the wages of sin is death. Uh, and God never hears the prayer of a sinner. So, we will try to leave this sin because we love the Lord. As our love for the Lord is more and more increasing, we will try to quit these sinful activities. What are these sinful activities? See, seeing uh, Simba, uh, seeing uh, the serials, uh, going for the pub, bar, disco. You see, seeing uh, mobile, getting addicted to all these uh, internet apps and all. These are the evil activities, uh, the sinful activities, which Satan is trying to deceive God's people. Read Second Timothy 2.19, brother. 2 Timothy 2, 19. You can also read from the screen if it's possible. Oh, brother, you're there? 2 Timothy 2, 19. Oh. Sorry. Uh, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Um, you see, let everyone that name the name of Christ. We call ourselves Christians, no? And what we should do? We should depart from iniquity. What God doesn't like, we should never do and we should never touch. So this is the third step. And what is the first step? The first step is the step of where Jesus began his race. You see, Jesus began from this step of the fourth. You see, what is this one? That uh, this step is the consecrating or dedicating themselves to the Lord. What did Jesus do at River Jordan? He said, no, Lord, lo, I come to do thy will. So he offered his body as a living sacrifice to please God. So similarly, in the tabernacle, we studied, no? Huh? What does uh, Apostle Paul say? Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. So, our sacrifice which we offer to God should be holy and acceptable. This is what Jesus did. When Jesus offered himself at River Jordan, 
his sacrifice was holy and he accepted it. So now we are sinners. How does God accept it? Through Jesus, if we come to God, God will forgive all our sins and uh, we should lay ourselves on the altar. What is that altar? Huh? That altar is uh, the self-sacrifice. Uh, you see? Therefore, what did uh, Jesus uh, uh, say? Lo, I come. The volume of book, it is written of me. To do thy will. Uh, therefore, what did Jesus say? Huh? He also said the same thing to us. Uh, if any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do is himself. Uh, read Matthew 16, 24, brother. Matthew 16, 24. Uh. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Ah, you see? What did Jesus do? He said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. You see? And take up the cross. The first thing a man should do is deny self. Take the cross and follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see? Then only what will become? Will become as new creatures. So Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit when he offered himself at the baptism in River Jordan. So similarly, if we need to receive the Holy Spirit. It comes only at the consecration. Consecration when? We're offering ourselves as a living sacrifice in death at our baptism. Now, this is the fourth one. You see, now we have come the midway. So, all the steps are important. What is the fifth one? The fifth one and the fifth immersion is walking. You see, as per what Jesus walked. You see, till now we are told some things that we will do, we will be like this, all those things. That is all theory. But practically, we should walk in the footsteps of Jesus and show that we are really God's children. Read with that. 1 John 2, 6. Brother. Hmm. He that saith he abide in him out himself also so to walk even as he walked. Mm. You see, even as Jesus, uh, you see, walked, uh, we also should walk in his steps. It seems to be up then. How did Jesus walk? Uh? You see, that's what Apostle Paul said. Uh, Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. He boldly could say that it is no more I am that living, but it is Jesus Christ who is living in me. He was living such a practical life. So, telling that I will sacrifice is something, but now actually we should walk uh, as per our talk and show. Read Galatians 4 19, brother. Galatians 4 19, brother. Okay. My little children, of whom I travel in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. Oh, so finished, okay. So, my little children. Apostle Paul said, Christ formed in you. This Christ should be formed in us. How? When we daily take the cross and follow Christ's footsteps, Christ is formed in us. When we daily deny ourselves, okay, and try to walk as per the Bible. So, now sixth step, last but one step, is very, very important. After consecrating our life, after trying to walk practically, the final test, you see, the majority test comes in, you see, love. Many people fall away at this stage because of love. They come to this stage. But instead of taking immersion, instead of taking the step boldly, they will draw back. This is the final test of the brethren. You see, uh, what is the fruits of the Holy Spirit? If you see, the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, the first itself is love. Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace. So love, love is the first and the primary fruit of the Holy Spirit. You see, and Romans 13.10, uh, Apostle Paul says, if you start loving everybody, then it is like fulfilling the law of uh, the Old Testament. So, law was totally hidden in the word love. See, in this love, there are three types of love. Philia love, Eros love, 
agape love. Now, what is filial love? The filial love is affectionate love. You see, like for example, huh? you see, we tell no, a mother is having a, a love upon the child. That is called as affectionate love. You see, huh? and uh, you see, uh, some people have uh, on other children. That is affectionate love. Oh, I love my child. I love my sister's child. That is called as affectionate love. But the second love called as eros love. Eros love is a bodily love, physical love. You see, the love between, uh, you see, husband and uh, wife, uh, uh, and the bride and the bridegroom. That is what, uh, you see, that is eros love. And the last and the important love is agape love. Agape love is selfless love. A selfless love is the love which God showed upon us who were sinners. It is the same thing which Christ, Christ Jesus demonstrated in his life and showed to Hazza. There is one scripture, one chapter in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, which gives completely about love. You see, now let us read what does the 1 Corinthians 13 chapter say. Read with the 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, one by one, slowly you read with We will see. Hmm. Come on, verse. Hmm. First Corinthians 13, chapter first one. So I speak with the tongues of man and of angel and have not charity. Hmm. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling. Symbol. Hmm. Correct. Continue. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. See, what does he say? Though I speak in tongues of men, what? Uh, though I speak in various languages, uh, and if I don't have love, I'm, nothing, yeah. I'm just like a sounding brass, it seems. Uh, you see, in a temple, they put uh, temple bra you see, bells, no? Uh, in the churches, they put bells, no? What is the use of uh, the bell? It simply keeps on ringing. It doesn't know why it's ringing and all those things. Does it have any love? No. It keeps on doing its work. Uh, if you have a gift of prophecy, understanding everything, uh, but if you don't have love, you are waste. We have faith. How much of faith do we want to remove the mountains? The faith of a mustard seed. That is sufficient to remove the mountains. That's what Jesus said. No? If you have faith of this small mustard seed, immediately the, if you tell to the mountain, it will get drowned in the sea. So this much of faith also if you have, we don't have love means we are waste. You see, the next brother continue. Huh? Hmm. Continue, brother. Oh, brother, you can continue. Verse 3. And though I have I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be born. And I uh, have not charity. It profit me nothing. See? To give everything for the poor. Sacrifice everything. You see? Give a lot of offerings. Uh, help the poor. You see? All those things. Uh, even if you die, uh, uh, get somebody burns us for, uh, as we are Christians. Uh, but if you don't have love, it is nothing it seems. Now in verse 4, brother. Uh, charity. The first... Long. Ah, charity uh, suffers kind of... long. Uh, slowly we'll see, brother. One huh? Charity suffers long, it seems. Uh, there's one person called as Socrates. There was a person, okay, his name was Socrates. He was so very patient and a calm man that uh, every day in the evening, our wife used to come and torture him with a scolding, lot of things, it seems. Uh. One day what happened? So similarly, his wife was screaming, screaming, screaming. 
Yet Socrates was silent. He seems did not open his mouth. Kept quiet. He seems. So his wife got so fed up. She brought a bucket of water and poured upon his head. Sir, you know what did Socrates do? He simply told one word. Till now it was thundering. Now it began to rain. So that is patience, and it is kind. You see, kind means what? How do we welcome a person or a brother who comes to anybody's house? Brother, welcome. Just not uh, pretending to be welcoming. Uh, you see, it is uh, kind. Uh, charity, anyway, not. Uh, you see, you see, it is not uh, selfishly motivated. Uh, what is the meaning of selfishly motivated? Envy. You see, jealous. He is not jealous. Uh, you see, huh? How? What is the meaning of uh, uh, jealousy? Huh? You know, there were two neighbors, it seems. So one day, what happened? God appeared to one of the neighbor and told him, "Sir, I have heard your prayer. I will give you one wish. Whatever you wish you ask, you tell me. I will definitely give you whatever you want to ask. I will give you. But remember, whatever you ask, see, whatever you get, the twice of it will be given to your enemy, who is your neighbor." God told him. So first he was very happy. But later he become very angry and thought, "Yo, what is this? Becomes this one. Whatever I ask, eh? God will give me. But he will get double. If I ask for a golden car, he will get two golden cars. Yo, if I ask for a palace, he will get two palaces. Oh, whatever I ask, he will become eh? double the richer than me. Then he thought, 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 and thought, and he told, God, give me one day time." I told, okay, take one day time. Next day, he came, you see, and uh, God asked him, tell me what's your wish. He told, God, take away my one eyes. Pluck out my eyes. Why? Because his enemy's two eyes should be plucked out. This is envy. This is jealousy. Love doesn't envy. Then, charity wanteth not itself. Always keep on speaking about self. Oh, I was like that. I am like this. I am like that. Huh? I did these things. I, I, I. This is the spirit of the devil. Then, charity is not puffed up. You see, it is not easily puffed up. If somebody tells something good about you, it doesn't be, uh, you see, uh, uh, make you big. Make you think that you are something great. Then, uh, charity does not behave itself unseemingly does not misbehave just because uh, uh, you see uh, all all our brothers and sisters uh, doesn't mean that we go and hug your sister and kiss her oh in christ i hug you and kiss you no that's misbehaving uh, you see and it is not easily provoked uh, when somebody keeps on tempting you you see doesn't mean that you become violent and uh, you see immediately you get angry you see, it's not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. You see, no evil thoughts are, you see, motivated or uh, encouraged one who really has love. Then, sixth verse, you see, it rejoiceth not in iniquity. What is the meaning of this one? You see, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Correct, right, brother? Sixth verse is, brother. Oh, brother, can you read? Sixth verse. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Ah, in the truth. You see, which is the truth? Thy word is the truth. This is the truth. What we are seeing for so many days. Huh? Just because we love somebody, though they tell lies, doesn't mean that we love it. That is not true love. What does it say? A true love doesn't rejoice in false things. The great antiquated system, the false teachings, the false... You see doctrines of this uh, false churches, uh, but it rejoices in the truth. Uh, you see, this is the rejoicing uh, that uh, Jesus had. Uh, though the people, he was in Israel, the uh, people of Israel never accepted his truth. Uh, so what did Jesus do? He left Israel and came out and preached where? Uh, to the common people. Next, uh, seventh verse, brother. Charity? Huh? Breath all things, believe all things, 
hope all things and endure all things. Hmm. Continue. The charity never fails. Ah, okay. Thank you, brother. So charity never fails. Never fails. Never. Uh, so thank you, brother. Let us stop it here. Okay. It says charity never fails. Love never fails. So do we have this love? This is the sixth and a very important step. Now we need to put our question and see whether we are really having this love. How, how do we check it? Well, instead of uh, reading this verse in this way, we'll try to read in other way and see whether we have love or not. Instead of uh, putting charity, let us put the word Jesus and read in the Bible. I'll read it for you. See, uh, <clears throat> verse 4, brother. You concentrate, uh, brother. Uh, oh, brother, see your Bible and read, okay, for yourself. I'll read it for you, okay? Jesus suffered long. Correct, now? Very good. And is kind. Jesus envieth not. Chari Jesus wanteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Do not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not our own. Is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Jesus bears all things. Jesus believeth all things. Jesus hopes all things. Jesus endure all things. Jesus never fail. How oh, absolutely these verses fit to Jesus. But let us apply this verse to us and see whether this verse correctly suits us. Do we have that love within us? Huh? See, I suffer long. Oh, really do we suffer long? I am kind. Really are we kind? You see, I envy not. Really, are we not jealousy? I huh? want it, not itself. I am not easily puffed up. You see? I do not behave unseemingly. I don't seek my own. I am not easily provoked. I think no evil. I rejoice not in iniquity. Really? Do we not rejoice in iniquity? I rejoice in truth. Oh, really do we rejoice only in the truth? Or else are we rejoicing in the false also? I bear all things. I believe all things. I hope all things. I endure all things. I never fail. Definitely we will fail. Brother, this is the sixth step which everybody has to cross. The perfection of love. This is Christ likeness. This is the sixth Dipinga. Naman did he turn away? No. Anybody would have turned away. Very, very possibility is that we may fall from this stage. But ultimately, what happened? Naman took the seventh dipping. What is the meaning of the seventh dipping? The final step every man has to take. The death and resurrection on that side of the way. We need to leave our body here. In dying, in death, we need to immerse ourselves completely in death. After death only, we will be raised as a new creature, having a new body. You see? What does the Bible say? Read, brother. Revelation 2.10, brother. Revelation 2.10. Home, oh, brother, can you read? Revelation 2.10. Revelation 2.10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you unto prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give the uh, crown of life. Mm, faithful unto death. If you are faithful till death, then only we will get a crown of life. So if you want to have the crown of life, have a new body, a new creature body, the spiritual body to rule with Christ, we need to take these seven steps. The seven steps are very important. The first step, faith. Second step, the truth. The third step, separation from sin. The fourth is consecrating ourselves. 
to the Lord. So many Christians, you see, they stop at the third stage itself. They have faith, they learn truth, they separate from sin. They think this is sufficient. No, no, no. Where are the other steps? Consecrating a life to God. The fifth step, quickening. As we consecrate, we need to walk as per consecration. The sixth step is love. Perfect love, as we discussed now, as we read in First Corinthians 13 chapter. The last is death, to remain faithful to God till our death. So, once if we take these seven steps, then only we can be of the new creature. You see, these seven steps has to be taken. We can't bypass and directly jump to the seventh step. After one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, fifth, sixth, after sixth, seventh. So ultimately, only we can be part of the Christ body. Anyway, God bless these words. Uh, my God bless everybody.